Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. These are the men that taught us this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, and peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect. In this video, I want to talk about uh, why we need the law. The laws, the statutes, and the commandments that are written in the Bible. And I'm talking about from all the way from the book of Genesis through uh, the book of Revelation. Because there's laws, and there's not only uh, laws in the first five books of uh, Moses, okay? But there's laws all throughout the Bible. This is, is the Bible is also known as the, uh, the book of the commandments, okay? The instruction book. So there's laws all throughout the out, out the Bible, and um, you so-called Christians, okay? Which you know y'all believe in Christianity, regardless of what denomination you up under, okay? Whether you a Seven Day Adventist, whether you a uh, Baptist, whether you Methodist, Presbyterian, and the list goes on of these different denominations that fall up under uh christianity and it's wacky and it's tacky and one of the main reasons why it's it's all wacky and, and out of order and tacky as hell is because y'all believe that the the law is done away with okay and uh that's not so the law is not done away with now the reason i brought up you so-called christians is because Y'all love to talk about the New Testament and the New Covenant, okay? Well, the New Testament or the New Covenant, uh, it's all about the law, okay? Because you read about it, and a matter of fact, I'm gonna get. I'll start this lesson off with that real quick. The new, the the new uh, covenant, being under the New Covenant, which only pertains to the Israelites. Is us is is all about us getting the law, receiving the law in our mind. So let me go ahead and bring it out. This is Hebrews chapter eight. I'm gonna start at verse six. It says, "But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is a mediator that he is talking about uh, Yahweh uh, of a better covenant which." was established upon better promises. It says, For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Okay, so y'all, so-called Christians love to talk about, okay, and this applies to that damn uh, clown, Vocab Malone, okay, and the rest of you out there. It says, uh, For if, for finding fault, I'm sorry, for if the first covenant had been faultless, so, I'm sorry, then should no place have been sought for the second, or, the, or in other words, the new covenant. For finding fault with them, okay, finding fault with the Israelites, us being in this flesh, not being able to keep the, uh, the agreement, which the agreement was that we would keep all the law, statutes, and commandments in the Bible, and in turn we would be blessed above all the nations of the earth, and we would we would have the we would get the holy land forever, and we gonna get these things, okay? But we had to go through a uh, prophecy had to be fulfilled, okay? We had to fall away, we had to keep breaking the commandments, all as a, a, a learning lesson of what br wickedness brings. What not keeping the law brings. Okay. So finding fault with them. Talking about the Israelites. He said behold the days come. Said the Lord I will make a new covenant. Y'all love to talk about the new covenant. Okay. The new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, which the agreement was we were to keep the law. 
if we didn't keep the law, the other side of the, the agreement was if we didn't keep the law, that we would undergo uh, all the curses that you read about in Deuteronomy 28, starting at the, the 15th verse, I believe. And regarded them not, said the Lord, for this is the new covenant. I'm sorry, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And uh, I'll keep reading. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And we're not seeing this new covenant. The nations are not, other nations are not mentioned. The Gentiles are not mentioned. Because the Gentiles you read about in the New Testament, as far as uh, concerning salvation, are Israelites. Or else that would make this uh, scripture right here, which this is this is referring to Jeremiah 31 and 30, starting at 31, uh, a contradiction to what you read or to the understanding that you have when you read the Gentiles receiving salvation. Uh, mainly you read about that in the New Testament. OK, but right here, as it states, the new covenant is for is for the Israelites. It says, and every man his neighbor saying, know the, know the Lord. And how do we know the Lord? Through the law. Through order. Okay? Well, you establish order through laws. All right? For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. How are you unrighteous? By breaking the law. How are you righteous? By keeping the law. And their sins and their iniquity, see, all pertaining to the Israelites, their sins, their breaking of the law, and their iniquity, meaning sin, will I remember no more. It says, And that he said, a new covenant, he hath made the first old, not the law old, the first agreement old. It says, now that which decayed and waxed it all is ready to vanish away. Okay, because there's a new agreement. And the way we're going to get that new covenant, the Israelites, okay, or fully get it, is by we have to be changed. Our flesh has to be changed because this flesh cannot keep the law perfect. Okay, but that's another, uh, another topic. But uh, I, w I want to bring that out because you got these, like I said, you have these Christians that love to talk about under the new covenant, under the, all the nations can be delivered and all that. Well, under, you know, and uh, under the new covenant, we don't have to keep the law. That's a goddamn lie because I just read uh, um, what the new covenant is. That's the Israelites getting the laws put in their mind. So why? So how in the hell is the new covenant under the new covenant, the law is done away with. Okay? Now, the reason you, we need the law, okay, is because we need order. And the way that you establish order is through laws. The Most High gave us laws so that we can be in order while we walk on this planet Earth, while we live here on this planet Earth. What did Paul say? Let me get that real quick. Uh... 1 Corinthians 14, and I believe the last verse, I think 14 and 40. Yes, it says, this is 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. Now, how do you establish what is decent and what is in order? You have to have a standard, or in other words, a law in place so that you can Go to that standard of that law so that you can make sure that thing or so that you can identify what's in order and, and, and what's decent and what's not in order and what's not decent. There has to be a standard there or a law so that you can determine that. And the reason why you, you so-called Christians, you know, cling on to that idea that the law is done away with is because you don't want to have to deal with any discipline. 
You want to be able to do what the hell you want to do. You want to be able to be wicked and be justified at the same time. And it don't work like that. Be justified. Uh, be able to just be wicked as you want to be or do what the hell you want to do. And then at the end of the day, say that you're justified under the new covenant. That's bullshit, man. I got a quick scripture. This is 2 Thessalonians. I want to back up that statement. You know, our people, two thirds of you, especially here in this in America, uh, you love to be wicked. You take pleasure in it. So keeping the law is a, is a burden to you because it, you you're not able to to be pleased to please your flesh. This is Second Thessalonians chapter two. And uh, verse 10, it says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. One of the lies that you believe is that under uh, you save I'm sorry that you don't have to keep the law okay you saved through grace now we are saved through election and we are saved uh, through uh, grace for uh, through grace and through faith okay but the ones that are under the grace and uh, and display faith are going to rehearse the keep the law to the best of their ability. They're going to strive to keep the law as best as they can. That's why James said what he said in uh chapter uh I'm sorry, James chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. Okay? What did what did he say? He said um I will show my faith by my works. Okay? The main work is to teach this word and uh, also to rehearse the uh, the righteous acts. Okay. So let me see. Uh, let me continue on. This is Second Thessalonians. This is the point. Two and twelve. It says that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So you know the majority of our people, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the Israelites according to the Bible, they take pleasure in not keeping the law. Because in order to keep the law, you have to uh, be disciplined. You have to discipline yourself. You have to discipline your flesh, okay? Your fleshly lust, as the scriptures call it, okay? And y'all don't want to deal with that, so it's... it's it's beneficial for you to say that, oh, we have grace through the blood. We have, uh, we're covered in the blood of Jesus. We don't have to uh, keep the law. Well, y'all not dealing with the, the scriptures, okay? And that's the reason why, that's the one of the main places where wickedness goes on at. Those are some of the wicked, most wicked people, man. And we can say that over here at Great Millstone and these other Israelite groups, you know, can say the same thing because we've been inside of the church. We was raised up in the, in the church. A lot of us, majority of us, we know what goes on in there and ain't the laws are not being executed. People are proclaiming with their mouth that they're righteous. They don't even know what righteous is. They don't even know. Uh, they don't even know the 10 commandments. I guarantee if you go ask a, a so-called Christian to tell you the Ten Commandments, they couldn't tell you. I guarantee it. There may be a few, but for the most part, they don't know what the Ten, even, they don't even know the Ten Commandments. They don't even know where the Ten Commandments are at in the Bible. You know? And that's some of the most vile, wicked acts. Homosexuality is taking place in their adultery, which those are... Two of the top sins that you can commit, two of the laws that you can, top laws that you can break is, is, is 
homosexuality and adultery. Okay? And that's going on in there. Idol worship is going on in there. Uh, uh, they don't know the name of the Lord, so y'all breaking the third law, which is take not his name in vain. But y'all don't know the name, so, you know, it is, that is what it is. But we tell you the name. We've, you know, we te we, we've been pushing the name, especially over here at Great Millstone. And ain't nobody, hey, well, you so-called Christians, y'all want to deal with Jesus. You want to deal with God and Jesus. That ain't the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay, uh, in order for you not to be vile and not to commit wickedness, you need we need a standard in place, and the Most High gave us the perfect standard or law, which is right here in this book. So when we deal with different situations, wherever it's a, a moral uh, situation or a uh, civil or when it comes to keeping a holiday, which that would be a ceremony, a ceremonial law, why we keep certain ceremonies or high holy days, we will know how to conduct or how to deal with that sit upon the law, okay? Uh, where did I want to go to? Okay, I got a couple of more scriptures, and I'm gonna end this in this lesson. This is Deuteronomy chapter uh, four and verse five. It says, "Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, the same thing as laws. Okay, even as the Lord my uh, God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it." And this is to the Israelites, us Israelites, okay? It says, keep therefore and do them. Do what? Keep the laws and, and do the laws, okay? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear of all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Because really, if you go and you read in the law, it gives you understanding on how to live your life. It makes sense. The law makes sense, okay? It makes sense not to, for a man not to lie down with another man, which nature itself tells you that. You know, you don't, you know, we know that in our spirit that that's not right. That keeps, that's just a, a morally vile, abominable thing to do okay when you go and read this law it makes sense to keep the dietary law okay so you can be in better health so you can be clean and not filthy okay a lot of health problems that our people have is due to that them not keeping the dietary law that's written in the scriptures the scriptures you know, tells us to deal with the herbs, and that's medicine. It tells us to, uh, you can read Daniel, I believe it's in the first chapter, matter of fact. Read the account in, uh, in, in Daniel where Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which that was their Babylonian names. I cannot think of their, uh, their actual names. I believe it was Azariah. Michelle and uh, I can't think of the other name, Salakia. But any, anyway, they Daniel said that they they would they were gonna basically do an experiment. They wasn't gonna eat the king's meat or drink wine. They were gonna eat posts. You look up that word posts. I can't remember the Hebrew word, but it, it means vegetables. Okay, and um, water. And they said they did that they, after a period of time. And you can go read this in Daniel, the first chapter, I believe. Okay. After a period of time, it said that they looked at healthier. It said that their countenance looked at fair, more, uh, and their faces were even fat. 
food, you know, meaning that uh, just because they weren't consuming all this meat, it wasn't they had to look uh, famished, you know, or like they wasn't getting nourishment. They looked at healthier and were healthier because if you drink water and you eat vegetables, you're going to be in a more healthier state than a person that just consumes consume meat. And here in this country, in America, most people, what they eat is uh, their diet consists of bread, um, uh, starch and uh meat okay and very little to none uh vegetables so you know i just use that as an example it makes sense to keep the law and there's many it's over 613 laws and really more than that because there's laws all throughout the bible okay and um when you look into the law it gives you under it gives you understanding. Oh, I see why. If I um, I see why not to do these things because these are the results if you do them. Okay. Outside of the penalty of breaking the law, there's other results that happen from not keeping the law. Okay. So. Uh, the law was given, you know, the other nations are supposed to look at us Israelites, supposed to look at us Israelites and be like, um, be like, um, this is a very understanding and wise people based upon how we conduct ourselves. And the reason we conducting ourselves that way is because is because we keep the law. We have laws that we keep. So based upon laws that we keep, laws that we are keeping, and they don't know the laws, they're looking at how we're conducting ourselves. But it's based upon the law. And they say, damn, this people is wise. They understand it. And I gave you an example, you know, about the dietary law, you know? Now, if anybody out there have was staying from a, eating a lot of meat and, and, and ate a high alkaline diet or like a leafy green vegetable diet pretty much and drunk a lot, drink a lot of water, you can testify. I've done it before and I, you know, I do it. Uh, you feel better. You have energy. Your skin is clear. All these things, man. So last scripture, and I'm going to uh, close this lesson out. This is Psalms chapter uh, 19, verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And the and that call yourself Christians, you're some of the vile, most vile, wicked people on this planet. Okay. And when you run into situations, you you deal with it according to your emotions and you don't. And if you deal with it according to the law, the outcome of that situation would be a lot better, would be better, would be right. If, you know, if you uh, if you dealt with the law, but you're dealing with your emotions and you're dealing with what you want to do. OK. It'll stop all the, we wouldn't have, we would, it'll stop the murder. It'll stop uh, all the wickedness that takes place amongst our people. And I'm focusing on Israel. Fuck the other nations. You know? But it's all set up, you know? Everything is going according to plan and prophecy. Okay? Everything that's happened in the, hist in the past and history and that's happened in present day is supposed to go down this way. OK, because it's all written. But the point of this lesson is the reason why we need need the law to keep the law. It's crazy for you to think that the law is done away with. And we don't have to keep the law. And that's because that justify your wickedness and you take pleasure in being wicked. Like I read earlier, it says uh, this is Psalms 19, 7. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. 
And we were simple at one time because, you know, we didn't understand this, this book. And we keep the law to the best of our ability, all right? And we understand we cannot keep the law perfect. And we understand that we're not going to be justified by the law. We're justified by belief, our belief in Yahawashai. But our belief in Yahawashai consists of us rehearsing the law to the best of our ability. It says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the the eyes. All right. You know, so this was definitely an exhortation, exhortation to the law and to keep the law to the best of your ability. And why we need to keep the law is pure. Okay. It opens up your eyes. And uh, that that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, Lord willing, this lesson was uh, edifying and exhorting to the spirit. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory once again to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash, double honor to the apostles and the elders who taught us this truth through the spirit, and peace and blessings on to the elect, the hopeful elect, Shalom.